When I'm deciding treatment for patients with metastatic CRPC after progression on an androgen receptor-directed therapy, I certainly consider whether the disease is symptomatic or, or asymptomatic. We could consider using Cipulose LT in patients who have a low burden of metastatic disease and are completely asymptomatic. Also, uh, thinking about whether they have liver metastases because we did not test Cipulose LT in the phase tri three trial that led to its approval in patients with liver metastases. For this patient, we know that he has had some symptoms and actually has a, a high PSA at the time of his recurrence. And usually we think about things like Cipulose LT in patients who do not have any pain or are relatively asymptomatic and who also have a relatively low PSA because those are the patients in whom we think it will work best. Uh, in this patient, I would also think about other exposure. So this patient's also had chemotherapy. Uh, and so in that setting, in the setting of, a, of exposure to an androgen receptor-directed therapy and chemotherapy, I would want to change the mechanism of action away from an androgen receptor-directed therapy and focus on things like PARP inhibitors if the patient had a DNA repair defect or another chemotherapy if the patient uh, did not have that defect or potentially radium, which could be an option in patients who only have bone metastases, no lymph node metastases, and no visceral disease. Again, for this patient, we know that he actually started off with lymph node metastatic disease, and so radium would not be expected to maintain disease control as it does not affect any disease outside of the bone. For this patient, chemotherapy is the, the choice I would make even though he's had progression on docetaxel chemotherapy, we know that switching to cabazitaxel chemotherapy can be highly effective, both in terms of pain control and also in prolonging life. When I think about tolerance to chemotherapy, particularly the tolerance of cabazitaxel, I think about some studies that were done post-marketing, essentially, for cabazitaxel that demonstrated that cabazitaxel at the 20 milligram per meter squared dose actually had less fatigue and less neuropathy than docetaxel at its standard dose of 75 milligrams per meter squared. Cabazitaxel in my clinic and certainly in those trials is actually quite well tolerated, even in elderly patients. What we saw in the CARD trial was that cabazitaxel was actually better tolerated than a second line AR targeted agent in patients who had already had progression on an AR targeted agent and at least one line of chemotherapy. So in those patients, patients had a longer time to pain progression and had a better pain response than patients treated with the second AR targeted agent. These patients felt better than those patients on what we normally consider to be quite tolerable treatments. Um, and so even in elderly patients, in, in patients who have pain, cabazitaxel chemotherapy can be well tolerated with relatively low neuropathy and fatigue as compared to other chemotherapy agents. Uh, and, and certainly we would want to support these patients with our supportive measures, but we can get them through it and they seem to tolerate it quite well.